Several years ago, Guardians recovered a large number of calcified fragments aboard VIP 2015's Dreadnought. Hive relics that allowed us to transcribe their holy texts in full for the first time. Their books of sorrow. However, in light of recent events, Vanguard leadership has tasked the hidden with carrying out a fresh forensic analysis. One of our agents has been testing a new type of device we call a psychometer. Its designer describes it as a transmitter for imprinted memories. But essentially, we are able to use it to retrieve audio and even some visual data from inanimate objects. The data we have collected so far has already helped us revise several of our previous reports, and another of our agents has been preparing a dossier on the first 10 verses of the Books of Sorrow. A link to their report is provided for your review. Chapter 1, Verse 0 Fundament Dearest sisters, it's taken me two years, a quarter of our lives, but I've found the proof. We aren't native to the Fundament. Our ancient ancestors came here to hide. The plate of stone we live on, our Osmium Court, is one fragment of a rocky planet that crashed into the Fundament and broke apart. All the other nearby continents, the Helium Drinkers, the Bone Plaza, the Star Cutters, came from the same world. Perhaps the other races of the Fundament are migrants too. We live on the shrapnel of our homeworld, floating on an ocean deep inside a gas giant. That's what Fundament must be. A titanic gas planet. The endless storm above us must be one layer of the atmosphere. And the sea we float on? There's more down beneath it. So much more. You understand what this means, Sathona. The timid truth is a lie. We aren't meant to be the world's prey. We weren't born to live and die in the dark. We have a better destiny. Tell our father, Sister Sathona. This is the proof of his life's work. With love, for your second birthday, your first surviving sister, Orash. Chapter 1, Verse 1 Predators Predators and menaces, carved to endure by Zero, third surviving sister of the Osmium King's last brood. A Stormjoy A Stormjoy is a living cloud. When it passes over our continent, it lowers its feeding tentacles. On each tentacle are the bait stars. Although light makes you happy, you must avoid it. You will be eaten. A storm joy is a good way for an old person to choose death. Also, a daring knight can cut the bait stars from the tentacles. I have six. Falling. If you fall off the edge of the continent, you will die in the ocean. This is a special hazard when our father, the Osmium King, uses the engines. Helium Drinkers The currents of the Fundament Ocean bring us near other continents. The Helium Court is near us now. They are of our species, but they are our enemies. Their knights raid us every day. Helium drinkers have two legs, two arms, and three eyes just like us. But they are 
bright, evil. I want to be a knight and fight them. The helium drinker ambassador ate ten of my sisters as tribute. This is normal. However, I resent it. Mothers. Mothers can fly. They live much longer than ten years. Mothers are extremely smart and they guard their spawn. If you try to tamper with the eggs, they will eat you. Sathona wants to eat the jelly and become a mother when she turns four. Storms. The rain is often poisonous. Sometimes it dissolves flesh. When lightning misses the lightning farm, it can vaporize a person. This entire world is deadly to us. Mysteries. The fundament is very large. We are the smallest things in it. If you don't understand something, it will probably kill you. My teacher Teox says this is why we have such short lives. So we can breed and adapt quickly. Moon waves. My sister Orash is afraid of moon waves. When she gets back from her expedition to the Tungsten Monoliths, I will ask her why. Chapter 1, Verse 2 The Hateful Verse For the consideration of the Helium Court Written in desperation, this sealed secret. I am Teox, sterile mother, teacher to the children of the Osmium Throne. As a mother, I live long. As a neuter, I can rise above the small battles of court politics. I alone see the patterns of survival. Alone, I designed the great engines that move the Osmium Court. Now, alone, I must act to save my kingdom. Senility has claimed my lord, the Osmium King. He is ten and mad. The study of ancient text consumes him. Today, he raves about moons above the storm. Tomorrow, he will wander the halls, speaking to his familiar, a dead white worm from the deep sea. He keeps it in glass, and he tends to it, and he neglects the duties of a king. The Osmium King has three surviving heirs, each two years old. Zero, the youngest and bravest, who wants to be a knight. Sathona, most clever, who wants to be a mother. Orash, navigator child, who dreams of the infinite ocean. Tomorrow, she will return from the Tungsten Monoliths. None of these are suitable heirs. None of them will protect the Osmium Court from the Howling Fundament. Zero can fight, but not lead. Sathona can think, but not fight. Orash's curiosity will draw her away from duty. I fear for all future children. Soon, the Osmium King will lock himself into the royal orrery to study the moons. Gather your knights, O oh helium drinkers, and invade our continent. Kill the three heirs. I will rule the Osmium Court as your regent, and build engines for you. And if I fail, let the Leviathan in the deep eat me. Written in grief, this hateful request. Teox, Osmium Mother, neutered to watch. Chapter 1, Verse 3 The Oath Sisters, 
This is how an oath is done. Put your left hands on the mast close to mine. Take the knife in your right hand. Push it through your left hand, straight between the bones. Now, carve a bloodline down the mast. Speak your oath. I am Zero, youngest daughter of the dead king. I will take back my Osmium court and kill the traitor Teox. On my left eye, I swear vengeance. In blood, the oath is made. I am Sophona, middle daughter of the dead king. I will take back my home and eat the mother jelly. I will raise my spawn on the corpse of the Helium King. On my right eye, I promise this. In blood, the oath is made. Now, I will help you make your oath, sister. I will help it too. I am Orash, first daughter of the Dead King. I will chase my father's last scream warning. I will know what changed the motion of our moons. If the end of the world is coming, I will understand why. On my center eye, I swear it. I will understand. In blood, the oath is made. In blood. Thank you, sisters. We have only my ship left to us. But a ship is freedom. We have secrets to hunt, stormlit realms to explore, and great armies to raise. Put up the lightning sails, and we will voyage far. Chapter 1, Verse 4 Syzygy The Syzygy Carved to endure by Orash, the High Vengeance. Only Zero's bait stars let us escape. Only Sathona's tricks let us reach the coast. But now that we have my ship, I must lead the way. I am the navigator. We may never see our homes again. Zero seethes with hate and fury for Teox. But this is my deepest fear. Our civilization drifts on the fundament. At the Tungsten Monolith, I learned that thousands of other species drift with us, coexisting on a vast world sea. And the tides of the fundament move us all. The timid truth says that we are the smallest, most fragile things alive the natural prey of the universe. Teox would have us believe that our ancestors came to the Fundament to hide from the hungry void. My father died afraid. Not of vile Teox or the helium drinkers, but of his orrery. He screamed to me, Orash, my first daughter, the moons are different. The laws are bent, and he made the sign of a syzygy. Imagine the 52 moons of Fundament lining up in the sky. It wouldn't take all 52, of course, just a few massive moons, but this is my deepest fear. Imagine their gravity pulling on the Fundament Sea, lifting it into a swollen bulge Imagine that bulge collapsing as the syzygy passed. A wave big enough to swallow civilizations. A god wave. I have to find a way to stop it. Before the god wave annihilates my species. If I could only get back into my father's orrery, I could learn exactly when. We are weeks of travel and many continents away from home. When I'm paralyzed by fear, Zero sits in the cabin with me and 
comforts me with soft, brave words. But more and more, we have come to rely on Sophona's wit. She will go off to be alone. She insists she must be alone. And return with some mad idea. Steer into the storm. Throw down a net. Eat that strange beast. Explore that menacing wreck. Somehow, Sothona seems to manufacture good luck by sheer will. Chapter 1, verse 5. Needle and Worm. My secrets, carved in my code by Sathona, the right eye vengeance. First. This year of wild voyaging, these lightning nights and golden days, these forays into ancient wrecks and wind-blown flights from monsters, these are the happiest times of my life. Second, I want to be a mother not because I want to spawn, but because I want a long life, long enough to make a difference. We have been at sea a year and I am afraid, afraid we will die out here. Third, I know where to find secrets. I know where vast, slow things with long memories live. Four. The Needle Ship. The Needle Ship, carved in my code by Sathona, a liar. We salvaged the needle from the Shuvi Maelstrom. I knew it would be there. The Needle is a grey ship, as long and slender as hope, as unbreakable as time and old, older than death. It tumbled through the maelstrom before our ancestors crashed into the fundament. This is not a sea ship like Orash's. It is an artifact of high technology. I know its purpose. I know what happened to the crew. Zero wants to sail the ship at Khan Atoll, where species gather. At auction, it would earn us enough wealth to hire mercenaries. We could retake our Osmium Court and send the baby eating helium drinkers screaming into the ocean. But I told Zero the ship was worthless. Orash wants to open the ship and see if we can take command of it. I know this is the right thing to do. I know, because I asked the worm. The worm, carved in my code by Sathona, who should be afraid. It was my father's familiar. I ripped it from him as we fled. It is a dead white thing, segmented, washed up from the deep sea. It's dead, but it still speaks to me. It says, listen closely, O oh vengeance mine. Chapter 1, verse 6. Sisters. A register of tokens and gestures exchanged before the end of sisterhood. Zero, my brave sister, you have worked too hard to move the carcasses out of the birthing room. Come, steer the ship for a while. Take joy in what our needle can do. Zero tried to protest, but secretly she was so glad for Orish's care. She flew the needle ship in cutting circles down beneath the sea, and their wake rose up to the surface like a traitor's dying breath. Orash, lonely navigator, we have travelled so long with only each other. 
I know you love to hear and speak new tongues. Come, sit in the flesh garden room. I will read you these stories I bought at Kahan. Orash sat among the mummified flesh fans with two of her eyes closed and listened in silence to Sathona's stories, hungry to understand, voracious to know as much as she could before her ten-year life died. Later, Zero said, Sathona, cutting mind of ours, you grow lonely in your thought. Play swords and lanterns with me. But Sathona was heavy with sorrow, and couldn't pretend any joy as she chased Zero through the needle's glistening halls. Sathona, pensive one, what is it? What troubles you? Her sisters listened, as Sathona said, Oath-bearing siblings, we are five years old. For two years we've worked to repair this ancient ship and understand its systems. I am almost too old for the Mother Jelly, and the knights who killed our father are surely dying of age. We three will die here. In exile, Taox will outlive us, and Orash, brilliant-eyed Orash, you will die of old age long before you have proof of your god wave, or any way to stop it. Orash and Zero looked at each other. I wish you weren't so honest, Zero said, and Orash thought that Sathona had never been wrong. In her soul, Orash knew that the only way to keep their oath was to find a great, powerful secret. A secret that could change everything. This was Orash's soul, her fire and her shadow. Her desire to cut through the flank of the world and find its beating heart. We have to dive, Orash said. That's what this ship is built to do. Dive into the fundament, the world below us, towards the core. That's where the ancient crew died so obscenely, Zero protested. That's where the atrocity in the birthing room was born. We have to dive, Sathona said, following the whispers of her familiar. In the world beneath us, in the metallic depths, I hope we may find what we need most. More time, more life. Chapter 1, Verse 7 The Dive For life, Sathona dove. For vengeance, Zero dove. And Orash dove to understand. The needle ship pierced the skin of the world and burrowed deep, through layers of foam and metal and cold elemental slush. Orash devoured the ship's maps of fundament, from the high angelic cloud decks, down and down, through storms and oceans and plates of floating world, into the crush of the core. They met monsters of continental scope, vast anemones that raised glowing tentacles to bait them in. Zero flew the needle ship through them, and they bled black carbon jelly and frost. They came to a still place, beneath a plate of metal. I'll use the sensors, whispered Orash. Listen. In the wet gold dark of the helm, they listened to the ship, and the ship listened to the crushing motions of fundament. They heard the collision of continents. They heard the patter and the crash of helium-neon rain. They heard the struggles of monsters, and they heard the distant groan of the ocean rising, tugged by distant moons. 
The syzygy is real, Sathona hissed. It's already begun. Behind them, Zero thought of the birthing canal, where ancient explorers had laboured over surgeries and administrations, peeling back the chrysalis and the call of that which they had made from the deep, whose birth none of them would survive. There's something down here, she whispered. Something secret. And the leviathan loomed over them, its brow as huge as all the continents of their childhood, its great array fins crackling with the lightning of its life, booming into the hull of the needle ship in a microwave voice. You must turn back. Save yourselves from the deep. Save the world from yourselves. You must turn back. Chapter 1, verse 8. Leviathan. The Leviathan's Warning. We live on the edge of a war. A war between formless and form, between the deep and the sky. My eyes are wide, my gaze is long, across the universe as far as I see. The sky works to charge its fires, and the deep drowns the ash. Sky builds gentle places, safe for life. Beloved fundament, refuge of trillions, the sky treasures this rich place, but the deep is here with us. Cold logic tests our walls, the deep claims its dominion, a ruthless final age. Or Ashi's protest. Old Leviathan, creature of myth. This world is no refuge. We live short, hard lives. We die in the dark. The storm above us will never end. And soon the god wave will take us all. Above us there are only storm joys, monsters, and moons of apocalypse. Let us go down, down where we may discover truth, some power to avenge ourselves upon our betrayers some hope of survival. The Leviathan's hope. What power calls you down to the deep? What instinct draws you away from high hope? Quick breeding krill people, I tell you, for aeons I have watched your struggle, clinging to the sharp edge of survival, balanced between the deep and the sky. You were my treasure, my proof against despair. For this is the deep claim. Existence is the struggle to exist. And when the struggle seems lost, when the safe place crumbles, everything turns to the deep to survive. I reject the deep claim. You will turn back, sweet krill of hope. You will choose the sky instead. Zero's protest. You are huge and old. Our lives are short and desperate. If that's the way the world's supposed to be, I won't have it. If people like Taox are supposed to win, I won't let them. I'll Beat the world until it changes. I'll kill anything in the way. The Leviathan's Dirge. This fatal logic. Hear my monopole scream. It will consume you. Before you lies the worship of death. The ruinous path. The sky builds new life against the onset of ruin towards a gentle world. The deep 
embraces death, saying, This is inevitable and right. I exist as hungry ruin. Turn back from the world-killing way, or you will live as death and devastation. The sky is the harder way, but it is kinder. My charge is balanced. My voice exhausted. Sathona's protest. Sisters, I have my father's familiar. Look, it answers me in plain words. It helped me find this ship. It gives me strength when hope is lost. Who will you trust? The voice that wants us to live and suffer, as we have lived and suffered? The Leviathan that offers no hope against Taox or the World Wave? Or the plain, honest worm? Let us see where its whisper leads us, Orash. Let us go deeper, Zero. Let us dive, O oh sisters mine. Chapter 1, verse 9. The Bargain. You are Orash, heir to the Osmium throne. You stand on the naked hull of an ancient ship. You stand exposed to the crushing pressure and ferocious heat of the deeper fundament. It should annihilate you. It is by my will alone that you survive. I am Yul, the honest worm. Behold my passage. Behold my vast displacement, my ponderous strength, my great and coiling length, my folded jaws and curled wings. Behold the hiving cities, symbiotic with my flesh. I am fecund, Arash. I am at the beginning and end of lives. Behold, I and Sol and Ur and Akka, the virtuous worms, look upon us and know that we are good. For millions of years, we have been trapped, growing in the deep. From across the stars, we have called life to fundament so that it might contend against extinction. For millennia, we have awaited you, our beloved hosts. Against you stand the cruel Leviathan and all the forces of the sky. They would crush you down into the dark. They have arranged their moons to drown you in fear of your potential. We want to help you, princess. We offer to each of you a bargain. A 
symbiosis. Take into your bodies our children, our newborn larvae. From them you shall obtain eternal life. From them you shall gain power over your own fragile flesh. The power to make of it as you will. Should you find an imperfection in the world, an injustice, or an inconvenience, you will have the power to repair it. Let no mere law bind you. We ask one thing in exchange, O oh princess. You must obey your nature forever in your immortality, Orash. You may never cease to explore and inquire for the sake of your children. In your immortality, Zero, you may never cease to test your strength. In your immortality, Sothona, you may never abandon cunning. If you do, your work will consume you. And as your power grows, O oh princess, so will your worm's appetite. But we offer Eternity, Orash, we offer you a chance at the universe. Would you deny your people infinity? Reach up to me. Let my flesh be your sacrament.